fully embracing the MAGA movement and former President Trump. Trump endorsed him. We're also watching Secretary of State Frank Larosa's campaign. He's talking a lot about his past military service in the Army. Senator Matt Bullitt is urging voters to see him as conservative. He also drew contrast with some Republicans vowing, if elected, to spend more money on Ukraine. Fox Meredith. Armed gangs attacked two neighborhoods in Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, killing at least 12 people. Another around bodies that litter the streets. The upscale neighborhood of Pechenville might have thought it could escape violence. A distraught resident called People of Haiti, wake up. Fox is Jonathan Savage. America's listed. Freedom 97.1 WSME. Live and local. Real talk starts now. And now is right now. Good morning. I'm Rayford Brown. I'm Kelly Knapp. And I'm Lee Barrows. Welcome to the uh, Tuesday edition. I got it right? Yes. So happy it's Tuesday. Too bad it's not Friday. But anyway, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a cool day. Where are, you, where are you guys on this date back in 2003? You remember the date? Yes. You know what you were doing? Yes. Watching TV, probably. I was working at the post. I was delivering mail. Well, supervising. On the 19th of March, the United States, along with coalition forces, primarily from the United Kingdom, initiates war in Iraq. Just after it explodes, began to rock Baghdad, Iraq's capital. U.S. President George W. Bush announced in a televised address, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. Bush and his advisors built much of their case for war on this uh, spacious claim that Iraq under di dictator Saddam and Hussein possessed or was in the process of building weapons of mass destruction. So many people say that was not the case, that it wasn't really going to happen, there were no weapons of mass destruction. Hostilities began about 90 minutes after the U.S. imposed deadline for Saddam Hussein to leave Iraq or face war. The first targets, which Bush said were of military importance, were hit with Tomahawk cruise missiles from U.S. fighter bombers and warships stationed in the Persian Gulf. In response to the attacks, Republic of Iraq Radio in Baghdad announced the evil ones, the enemies of God, land, and people. <clears throat> Boy, they have a way with words, don't they? Yes, they do. Coalition forces were able to topple his regime and capture Iraq's major cities in just three weeks, sustaining few casualties. President Bush declared the end of major combat operations on May 1st, 2003, less than two months into this thing. Despite the defeat of conventional military forces, Iraq and insurgency has continued in an intense guerrilla war in the nation in the years since military victory was announced, resulting in thousands of coalition military, insurgent, and civilian deaths. After an intense manhunt, U.S. soldiers found Hussein high in a six to eight foot deep hole nine miles outside his hometown. He did not resist and was uninjured during the arrest. A soldier at the scene described him as a man resigned to his fate. Hussein was arrested and began trial for crimes against his people, including mass killings in October 2005. He was hanged on December 30th, 2006. No weapons of mass destruction were found in Iraq. That's the claim. The U.S. declared an end of the war on December 15th, 2011, nearly 10 years after the fighting began. That was the claim for years, but the New York Times reported that from 2004 to 2011, American and American-trained Iraqi troops repeatedly encountered and on at least six occasions were wounded by chemical weapons, weapons of mass destruction, remaining from years earlier in Hussein's rule, and all American troops secretly reported finding roughly 5,000 chemical warheads, shells, or aviation bombs. Interesting. They got the intelligence documents to support that. They've interviewed dozens of people who were there. After Bush left office during the Obama years, it was revealed there was a plot to assassinate him. Do you remember that? Yes. An Iraqi citizen living in Ohio, that gets me too, yeah. plotted to smuggle ISIS sympathizers into the United States who do not care if they are killed during the mission to murder former President George W. Bush. Shibab, aha, shibab, shibab. Great name. 
53 years of age, the former commander in chief was responsible for killing many Iraqis and destroying the country during Operation Iraqi Freedom. Shabab pleaded guilty last year to attempting to provide material support to terrorists and was sentenced in February to more than 14 years in prison for that plot. <clears throat> Not a whole lot of publicity about that, was there? No. Do you remember any? Not really. No. I, I, it would have crossed my desk and I would have known it. Just recently reading it. He planned to smuggle at least seven Iraqi nationals across the U.S.-Mexican border for thousands of dollars, but he had no idea he was plotting the assassination he claimed with an unnamed informant identified in court paper, papers as CSI, CS1. <clears throat> in recorded conversations with the FBI's confidential source, Shibab admitted he wanted to be involved in the actual attack and assassination of former President Bush. The criminal complaint is alleging that, and he would be proud to give his life. Well, good. Give it now. I agree. Yeah. I, you know, this point in history, dating back quite a few years. I'm surprised it took him so long to uh, try him. him. Yes. Me too. 2003, and it was a, he was sentenced to 14 years last year, I think it was. Yeah. It was like 20 years. Well, all of this was happening. It happened after Bush was um, out of office because he was the former president. So it happened after 2008 when he uh, had, was trying to smuggle, planned to smuggle ISIS sympathizers across the border. Seven of them. We well, said, like, you brought that up. And <clears throat> you're right. I don't remember. <clears throat> Excuse me, Paulin. Um I don't remember this happening, but as I was along with this story, I was reading it, and I was like, what? I don't even remember this. Well, the FBI obviously had a good source. Yeah, he arrested him in 2022. Yeah. <laughs> Took a long time. He'll likely be deported after his prison sentence. Uh, well. I wouldn't let him out. 14 years, let's say he was 53. I don't know whether it's 53 at the time or 53 now, but that put him up there a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not sure what I would do with him. <clears throat> Long March ride on a short pier, short pier. He filed a claim for asylum with the U.S. citizenship, which was pending for review when he was arrested. <laughs> I want asylum. Nope. You're going back to over there and because you got <clears throat> caught, you're going to suffer over there. No doubt about it. He obtained fake divorce papers from his wife in Iraq to set up a sham marriage with a U.S. citizen uh -oh. to gain immigration <clears throat> status. Wow, what a character. There's so many reasons to get rid of him. Oh, sure. But wait sure. for 14 years to do it, please. Yes. Let's keep him out of action. Make him serve. Make him suffer. Every bit of it. Texas has, and speaking of the board, Texas has enacted a state law that would allow Texas lawmen to arrest illegals coming across the southern border into the Lone Star State. The Biden administration took the matter to the Supreme Court, and the court has agreed yesterday to continue a hold on that law until further notice. Texas took the action because the federal government is doing little to stem the flow of illegals into the state, and in most cases, it's a catch and release order from headquarters. Let me get this straight. Local and state law enforcement officers can arrest drug smugglers and traffickers, right? Federal crimes, and can take the cases before a federal judge, right? Right. If that's okay, why is it not okay to arrest illegals on federal charges? Since the feds are not doing anything about it, why can't the Texans arrest them and take them to federal court, turn them over? For a long time, local cops have arrested bank robbers under a federal statute. It's a federal offense to commit a bank robbery. You know that, right? Yes. And they've taken the bad guys to federal court. One of the reasons is that local parole boards are not nearly as tough to ensure the crooks do the sentences they are awarded as federal Parole, parole boards are more likely to have to do most of the time, maybe even all of the time are given in the federal system. Again, why is these, this administration protecting illegal aliens? There's got to be something we don't know. I'm surprised that the Supreme Court actually saw it Biden's way in this case. We have precedent. 
Local cops can arrest you for bank robbery and take you to federal court. They can arrest you on drug smuggling and trafficking charges and take you to federal court. Yeah. Local cops. What was down in Florida? Just off the beach. Sebastian Inlet, somewhere real close there. Anyway, they arrested a bunch of Haitians come, trying to come ashore. And they turned them over to the Coast Guard. They were deported. Was that the recent one? Yeah, that was one With earlier last week. Yes. Why not? Why can't local cops do the same thing to protect our borders, their borders, coming into their state? It's a federal offense. They should be able to arrest them. They should be able to arrest them and take them to federal court. I agree. Forget the immigration court. Just take them to federal court. I agree. Charge them with an illegal entry and send them on their way. But the courts are going to let them loose. The federal courts are going to let them loose. We have an open border. We haven't gotten to the federal court level yet. We get to federal immigration status. Once we get to federal court where the crime has been committed, and you show that a crime has been committed, and there's a jury there. You would think. Especially if you try them in the district, the federal district in Texas. Uh, I've lost a lot of faith in our federal courts over the years. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're being led by the uh, administration, whichever administration's in charge. <sighs> I think the Texans ought to be able to just Surveillance, arrest them. Citizens arrest, citizens arrest. That's in the Gomer Pyle days. Well, you know, we've got the Marine Corps base here. I don't think there would be too much of citizen arrest. Well, I think it'd be a beat down. Well, if, you, if they come into North Carolina and do get into North Carolina and they do inadvertently cross over on the river, cross into um, Camp Lejeune or New River Air Station, that in itself is a federal offense. It's called trespassing. Yes, it is. And we've seen that happen. And we have an incident a couple yep. years ago. We did. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did. So. Coming up in a boat upon the shores of Lejeune. On the base. Yeah. Dumb. Got caught. What else is happening? Anything in North Carolina? North Carolina. Um, Thursday night, there's a meeting to elect a new GOP state chairman. Mm-hmm. In Selma, North Carolina, and I'm still trying to figure out I'm going. That's a long ways to go. <laughs> it's a long ways for a, a weeknight meeting at 7 p.m. And then you've got three hours to drive back. Yes. I think it was purposely done that way. Because mm -hmm. you've got people coming from all over the state. Can't that, you Skype in your appearance? No. Why not? That caused a lot of controversy in the past. But um, and then I was sent an email saying... This is who Michael Watley wants. Please vote for him with no other names. And I got up this morning and just found a text from a good friend of mine. Please vote for me. Call me later. <laughs> I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so already, already there's drama. Yeah. What time is George coming in? Eight o'clock. Okay. And he is? Uh, George Cormos. He is a libertarian and he is running against, well, let's just say he's running for North Carolina um District 3, U.S. Congress. Mm -hmm. He's so on the ballot. He's on the ballot, and he will be in. And this is going to be something kind of interesting to hear his take on things. Mm -hmm. And we usually have a lot of Republicans coming here. We don't have a lot from the other parties. Um, there is a Democrat, and uh, there was at one time a week or two ago an effort to get him to come on the show this week, but apparently that's now fallen by the wayside. Yes, yes. By a Democrat. Right. Uh, recently become Democrat. Yeah. Um, well, if you're not on the ballot, I don't. I don't know how you're going to think you're going to get on the ballot. Oh uh, well, he's on the ballot. It's Democrat. Oh, he is on the ballot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought you were talking about somebody else. Okay, no, another, there's another Democrat who wants to get him in here. Oh, so he I see. Can take some numbers away from Dr. Murphy. Well, my opinion is going to be hard to do. No, it's a snowball's chance that's yeah. what happened. I, I just think it's going to be hard to do. It's hard to take an incumbent out. Um, well, it's hard to take an incumbent out, but, uh, you know. Uh, that's doing a good job. A Democrat right. going up against it right now is one thing. A Libertarian is another party. 
Well, I talked to this gentleman uh, for a little while uh, quite re recently, mm -hmm. and it was interesting to listen to the different aspects and different takes yep. on, on views on, on that political side. I so, read a little bit about his bio this morning, and I was like, that's interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and one of the things he's done that I've said as an independent is that, you know, there's hardly a lot of difference between the Republicans and the Democrats when you get down to it. Oh, I saw that statement. I, interesting. Yeah, I, I've interesting. said that before, too. I, found, I had an interesting. Maybe I'm a libertarian. You, <laughs> maybe you're a liberal, liberal unaffiliated. No, I'm not a liberal anything, <laughs> but um, libertarian. I think, you're, I think you're pretty moderate in your views. Yeah, probably. Except some things, you know. Right. No, I think Rafer is fairly conservative in his thinking. <laughs> I think he's pretty moderate. I, I, I think I'm moderate. Uh, I'm a moderate conservative. There you go. I think that I would agree with that part, that description yes. of me. Being just moderate, nah, I'm, I'm a moderate conservative or conservative moderate. I'm not sure which. You ever heard of AmeriCorps? Yeah. Yes. An independent agency of the United States government. An independent agency of the United States government. I did not know we had many independent agencies of the United States government other than the, the national intelligence groups. Mm. But that's what they're described as. It engages more than 5 million Americans? Yep. In service through a variety of stipend volunteer work programs in many sectors, it was founded by former President Bill Clinton. I right then and there, I stopped. I said, what is this about? Catching the attention of a North Carolina congresswoman who says the organization has not had a clean audit for the past seven years, American taxpayers are coughing up more than a billion dollars annually to support this, and they pay stipends. That makes it just a little bit of money for volunteer work programs. Volunteer work programs, they don't get stipends, do they? Don't, volunteers don't generally get a stipend, do they? The word volunteer would mm -hmm. make me think, that, no. Representative Virginia Fox out of North Carolina says yeah. it's a legacy of incompetence and total disregard for taxpayer money taking center stage. She chairs the House Committee on Education and Workforce, which requested the report. Identifying fraud risk, assessing inherent fraud risk, Setting risk tolerance and consideration of existing controls were all cited in a scathing report of the Corporation for National and Community Service, a.k.a. AmeriCorps, from the U.S. Government Accountability Office. Then why isn't the U.S. Government Accountability Office taking action seven years without a clean audit? I think, I think it's That's a problem. mandatory that you should have the audit done. Well, they're having the audit done, but it's not a clean one. It's not a good one. Right. Well, you think about that it. Means they're failing they're their audit. The federal government is giving them money. No, the federal government doesn't have any money. <laughs> they're stealing our money and giving it to them. I right. never knew AmeriCorps was a I don't know what I thought it was, but I never knew they were part of the federal government. Yeah. An independent part independent. of the federal government. What, what does that even mean? They can do whatever they want to. But how can you be an independent part of the federal government? Oh, you just give me the money, and I'm not going to tell you what's going on. I'm not going to do it. You don't have a right to know. Well, that's just like <laughs> nonprofit organizations that go before our county wanting funds. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the county has a process that you have to go through yep. in order to apply for that fund. But I also think that these nonprofits should be yearly Held accountable. Updating their paperwork, et cetera, and mm -hmm. submitting that. Um, and I just wonder, and I'm not saying it's happening in the county, I'm just using that as an example. But how many times have these nonprofits probably had issues or fallen by the wayside? And you mean like that uh, daycare operation one time where they couldn't account for the money that the county was giving them? Exactly. You know, circumstances like that, and this this is what it sounds like is going on with AmeriCorps. And then again, once again, you said it was founded by Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of political mess in this involved in this. Back in 1993. Yeah. But then I don't know why AmeriCorps is not 
you know, if they're giving money, like my agency, we get federal grant money, mm -hmm. but you know, and our money goes through Trillium. Yeah. Well, in order to recoup the money we spent, we have to provide receipts, and it has to be in the parameters of what the scope of what we're doing is. No mean, lobster, huh? No, mm -hmm. none of that. Um, so, I, and so, in other words, we can't just say, give us our money, and there's lump sum in pot of money. You draw the money down every month, but you draw mm -hmm. it down after you turn your receipts in. And the receipts are matched to your line item budget. You have to right. have a line item budget and the contract, all that stuff. I don't understand why AmeriCorps isn't doing that. And some of these other, not even the county should do that with the nonprofits they give money to. You know, you give a line item budget and then, you know, turn your expenditures in. Because otherwise, some of these, I've, I, mean, I have seen some shadiness in community practices. Um, make people prove that that's where they spent the money. Well, Kelly, does the federal government require your agency? To turn in an audit yearly? Well, see, Trillium audits us based on our expenditures. You don't have to because they manage the every dollar. I mean, you don't get reimbursed till you produce the, and the amount has to be to the penny. You can't spend over your amount. Right. You so, in essence, understand. you are I'm audited to, yeah, yearly. Yearly, Trillium's auditing based on, um, and then with some of the grants, they come in and they audit everything, the entire program. So also, if you have and the, the state people come in and they look at the program, or you know, have you seen as many people? Are you doing right. this, et cetera? But they also, you know, they depend on Trillium to look at the money. And believe me, they Trillium acts like it's their money. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> they so you, you can't have to talk about that after the commercial yeah. because um, walking the county commissioners meeting last night, a representative from Trillium was there. Yeah, and I saw that. Part. You you got to explain all that. <laughs> Okay. Because I pretty much got my take on what was being said, but you're, that's your field right there. You, mm -hmm. you know better. So. Well, and I know I, nothing. I work with Trillium almost 20, what would be Trillium almost 20 years now. So okay. I think some of that was gaslighting. But that's just my opinion. All right. Let's take a break. You're live in Little Real Talk from 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. Weather is next. WSME. Is your phone plan messing with your savings plan? Don't get stuck paying for things you don't want. With Verizon, you only pay for what you need. And for a limited time, when you bring your own phones to a Verizon store, you'll get an amazing price on your plan. Plus, you'll save on things you actually love, like the Netflix and Max with Ads bundle. And it's on our award-winning 5G network. Bring your phones to your Verizon store today for an incredible deal. A better plan to save is Verizon. Additional terms and conditions apply. Discover, this is Daniela. Hi, it's Jennifer Coolidge. I just want to thank you for making me feel so special. I earned cash back on debit for my dinner party groceries. That's great. But with Discover Cashback Debit, we give everyone cash back on everyday purchases. Anything else I can help you with? Do you like asparagus and mushroom sorbet? I've got leftovers. Introducing Discover Cashback Debit, a checking account with cash back. It pays to Discover. Eligibility in terms of discover.com slash cashback debit. Discover Bank, member FDIC. A plan every adult family member should consider is the pre-arranged funeral. It's the worry-saving thing to do for your family. Making pre-arrangements helps to alleviate the additional stress on family members that can come with arranging a loved one's funeral. Jones Funeral Homes' prepaid funeral plan helps remove confusion. They make a practical evaluation of costs possible, and it's the best way to take an unpleasant task off the shoulders of the family. Call Jones Funeral Home at 455 -12 281. With locations in Jacksonville, Ritzland, Swansboro, and Holly Ridge. Welcome to Lincoln & Associates Family Dentistry, where we love to make you smile. Now proud to be working with Drs. Kim and Tommy Morgan, formerly Morgan Family Dentistry, the Jacksonville and Richland's Morgan offices of Lane & Associates Family Dentistry, blends the latest technology with personal care and attention, so you have an amazing dental experience. The offices of Lane & Associates welcome all agents and accepts all major insurances, including military. Lane & Associates Family Dentistry has been serving the state of North Carolina for over 40 years with two locations in Jacksonville, Richlands and Maysville. Call for an appointment today at 877-LANE-DDS or online at LANEDDS.com. Welcome to Lane Associates Family Dentistry. 
When you need comfort, who do you call? An old friend, right? Jacksonville Heating Contractors services the heating and cooling needs of our area with dependable quality train systems, guaranteeing indoor comfort for your home or business. In addition to quality train systems, Jacksonville Heating Contractors offers 24-hour emergency service, Nate certified technicians, and over 50 years of experience and service you can trust. And with a Jacksonville Heating Contractor service agreement, You never pay retail for heating or cooling services and receive priority scheduling. Remember, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And in New Bern, you can call Trent Heating and Air Conditioning 252-633-2200. In Moorhead City, Sea Air Heating and Cooling 252-247-1122. If you need service or repairs, just call an old friend. Jacksonville Heating Contractors, an independent train dealer. It's hard to stop a train. For deals on train systems and more, visit anoldfriend.com or call 910-347-2843. Looking for a job? Full-time? Part-time? Il Cino Italiano Restaurant wants you. Currently hiring for hostesses, servers, bartenders, and dishwashers. Il Cino Italiano is a family-owned, fast-paced restaurant that offers the best in fine dining on the Crystal Coast. If you're hardworking, reliable, professional, and have a desire to always strive for better, we want to talk to you. Make great money and be a part of an outstanding, dedicated team. Il Cino Italiano on West Corbett Avenue in Swansboro. This is live and local Real Talk on Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM WSB. Hey, Marine Forecast this morning, uh, sponsored by WSB. Right now, small craft advisors in effect for a while this morning. Tomorrow, or today, later, northwesterly winds 15 to 20 knots, gusts to 30, becoming westerly this afternoon, 10 to 15, seas uh, 3 to 5 feet, 2 to 3 near shore, dominant period 5 seconds, sounds and rivers choppy, diminishing to a moderate chop later this afternoon. Tomorrow, southwesterly winds 15 to 20, gusts to 25, seas 4 to 6, dominant period 5 seconds, sounds and rivers choppy. Thursday, North, uh, northerly winds 10 to 15 knots, becoming northeasterly in the afternoon, seas 2 to 4 feet, sounds and rivers a moderate. Today, sunny, high of 56, winds 9 to 11 miles an hour with gusts as high as 16 miles an hour. Tonight, clear, in my opinion, cold, low of 43. <laughs> That's cold. It is, feels cold to me. Tomorrow, sunny, high of 70, winds 9 to 15 miles an hour with 23 mile an hour gusts. Tomorrow night, clear, again cold, low of 44. And on Thursday, sunny, high of 64, but only about 7 mile, mile an hour winds, so kind of calm winds. Mm, yeah, I can cold. get offshore a little bit. Where's a warm We weather? also have a statewide fire ban, mm. outdoor burning. Yeah, right now it's 37 degrees outside, too. It's 37? At, at New River. My at the air station. I had to turn my heat back on. I had to have my air on before, but now I had to put the heat on. I, it's cold. I didn't. It was pretty cold in here when I got in here this morning, so I kicked the heat on for about 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my heat's even on. I, I'm going to go look. <laughs> yeah, I've had my, I I had my air on, then I had to turn the heat on. Cold. Yeah. yeah, I think the backyard this morning was 41, so it's a little warmer out here at times. It's the time of the season yeah. when the morning you have the heat on, the afternoon you have the air on. Just like and that. I never know when I get in my truck, you know, usually every morning I get in there and it's set for air and I have to switch it. Yeah, it's you freeze just, to death. It's just that kind of morning. And okay. Lee, you, real quick, Rayford, Lee asked me something in the break That's right. um, yeah. about like, you know, dicks and, and, and I'm going to say again, what I think um, Onslow County needs in terms of a mental health and substance abuse facility. Dick's, um, is put where the former detox center was. In the back is the detox facility, and in the front now they have the what I call like the mental health, um, where you come in like almost like a crisis center. I don't know if that's what they would call it. Um, and it's you know what, ten beds or twelve beds? I don't know exactly like how many beds are over there. 12, I think sure. it's twelve, but I'm not positive. Um, what Onzo County needs is um, what I would call a standalone facility. I would say a hundred beds, but that's kind of a lot. Fifty start maybe fifty beds of just for just mental health. Let dicks do the substance and have a standalone facility for mental health for crises. So these people are not being sent over to OMH or people that um, are in a crisis situation. And you know this way also too. Um, Integrated Services here in Oslo County does the mobile crisis, and I think RIT might as well. And that's what you call them when someone's in a, a crisis and they normally come out to the home. Sometimes there's, you know, two or three hour wait time. But in my opinion, having a mental health facility 
50 to 100 beds here, it will take the pressure off the ER because the ER is not where these people need to be going. That's right. Or the it jail. Is, or the jail. Why would you take somebody in mental health crisis to jail? If you don't have beds? anything else, what yeah. else would you do? Yeah. I mean, but you take them to a facility like this so they can um, be in a safe environment. They will be evaluated by people actually trained. The jail staff is not trained. That's not their job to do that. The hospital staff, that's, they're not trained either. I mean, these places, yeah, they have mental health first aid, but that's not you know, handling a, a an acute mental health crisis. Um, but this facility could even house them, you know, 30 days, 60 days, you know, whatever they need. And I think some of this federal money that has come down for COVID, because COVID really made mental health crises mm, it re- recognizable. Yes. And I think this the state needs to start giving, you know, the, the county needs to ask for some of the COVID money and get and and also they need to be asking Trillium because Trillium now covers forty two counties. Let me tell you, they're raking in millions of dollars. They Trillium needs to pony up some money. Let Onzo County find you know there's find a facility. You just need a big enough building somewhere. I don't think you need to build it. I really do believe you could find. Um, you know, a big enough, like an old grocery store or something big, have start with 30 beds. I'm telling you right now, 30 would have a mental okay, health crisis. Okay, here, here's the situation. A grocery store or whatever, that's going to be mm-hmm. a location where probably a um, a shopping complex in the area, a little strip mall or whatever has gone under, right? Something like, you know. But I'm, is that? Is that a kind of a good environment to have one of these facilities? Well, a lot of these facilities are locked. So well, I understand that, but I don't mean that we'll get up and walk around. Mm-hmm. We'll get out, but uh, is that still just a great environment? You want something easily accessible because mm-hmm. not everybody has transportation. And that's been one of the barriers for people with mental health issues anyway, which is why a lot of times they're in a mental health crisis and mobile crisis has to come out. Not everybody has transportation. So if you have one central location for everyone, they know they, even if they're, if the police are called, they can transport them there instead of, because right now when they're called out to wherever, they're transporting them to the hospital. Mm-hmm. I mean, this kind of facility, just a big enough building um, would definitely help you get state money. Then you, they can build, you, you know, not everybody don't doesn't have insurance. You know, you can build whatever insurance they have and then use state dollar funds for those that don't have it. Um and they could be assessed. And if they need to go into some place like Cherry or whatever, which Cherry has a waiting list, once again, you can't get in by in anywhere at a mental health hospital or Holly Hills. Or so even, why did they close down uh, the Dix Center in Raleigh? Dix, Dorothea right? Dix. Dorothea Dix. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of it, one, the building was super old. But two. Um, but what's, what's it being used I for think, now? I don't. I think it got torn down, but I'm not positive. Hmm. I think so. I'm not 100%. I don't think it's even there. The building's even there anymore. Um, I mean, I could be wrong about that. I think it might have been mismanagement. Um, I mean, that place was a big, big facility. Uh-huh. And it had been there a really, really long uh-huh. time. Um, but, I mean, we need something because now Cherry Hospital was one of the biggest things left. And you, can, I've tried to get somebody in there. You cannot. It I, is I don't full. understand the tearing down a building and not having a, something, another plan. Welcome to state government. I don't know what, how to answer that. I don't that really understand them. Just what are you going to yeah. do with it? I mean, that'd be like closing. I don't central, think it was closed central prison. I don't. What are you going to do with the inmates? Well, here's what I got to say about that. I mean, I agree. And, and or you know, there are prisons in the state that have closed. Uh, you know, they're just not open anymore. Those no, small prison yeah, units. Yes, small yes. prison units. Then the state needs to come in. Um, or let's say if it's in one of the counties that Trillium covers, have them come in and partner and open one of those facilities as a, you know, yeah, you'd have to transport them there, but there's still a place to send somebody with a mental health crisis. Um, you know, we need a bigger facility in that because it will reduce the burden on the ER because people are staying there. Um, and, and, and I'm going to tell you something else I don't agree with. I do not agree with assessing people for in um, with IBCs through telehealth. I think it needs to be done in person. Bottom line. I don't yeah, agree that with that. I don't understand. I do not I, agree I, with it. I think it is a bad practice. <clears throat> I think it is it's a travesty that that is what is happening. 
I, and I don't agree with it. And I'll go on the record of saying I don't agree with it. I think when you have somebody that you are basically taking away their rights and freedoms to move about freely because of a someone uh, has alleged that they're having mental health issues, the whole point of an IBC is for them to be um, evaluated and deemed competent or not competent. Okay. It used to be, as I recall, for law enforcement, they would take somebody with an IBC, mm-hmm. right, and voluntary commitment folks, take them before a magistrate first, mm-hmm. and then decide, okay, we've got this document, then we take them over to be evaluated at the emergency room, be sure everything is also medically okay mm-hmm. to then to continue with an IBC. And then there was a couple of different things. There was the 30-day involuntary commitment. I mm-hmm. think that was standard, right? Yeah, it's not like that now, 72 hours now. <clears throat> Really? Mm-hmm. If they're deemed, so in other words, an IBC, you hold somebody for 72 hours and you um, evaluate. evaluate. And sometimes what happens is what a lot of what's happening a lot of times being transported to the ER. So then there's telehealth visit by telehealth um, evaluates. And so let's say someone is transported to, let's say Raleigh, if there's a facility in Raleigh, um, they're transported there, um, then they have a whole nother X amount of days to evaluate you there. Cause then at that point you're in an interim facility, but a lot of times what they start doing immediately is start giving people medicine that in my opinion, they may or may not actually need, but you can't leave some, you know, even at Onslow, there was someone at Onslow that was being IVC that asked to talk to their attorney and they were told they could not hmm. I have a problem with that. Bottom line. But I definitely have a problem with somebody that's being IVC'd, being examined for mental competency through telehealth. Explain what telehealth is. Uh, um, <clears throat> video? Like Skype? Yeah, like a Skype call. Like, like you've Zoom got a meeting. doctor could be in wherever they are. Mm-hmm. Um, so you could have a doctor from Timbuktu, you know, and, and like, for example, I had an individual that was woken up at 2 a.m., for there, they were held on an IVC over there and woken up at 2 a.m. Nobody is coherent after been sleeping and they were having a, a crisis woken up. No one is, go- I, you wake me up at 2 a.m., I'm probably going to be babbling. You know what I mean? Like immediately upon wake up, you, you have to kind of orient orient yourself. That is not the time yeah, to do it. It takes me time. It does. <laughs> and a it, cup of coffee. <laughs> some people need coffee. I mean, yes. they need a lot of things. And, and I think, but I think an in-person, because an in-person evaluation, you can look at body language. You can, there's a lot of things you can look at more closely than by through a computer screen. Well, agree, I'm going to disagree with you for just a little bit, but I think if you go to social media and evaluate some of those people, it's pretty obvious. Well, I mean, yes, but to a degree, but also too, Rayford, I mean, especially with somebody that has been brought in by an IVC, there's a whole lot of other things that a mental health professional is going to be looking at sure. that may not always show up through a distorted computer screen. Bottom line. Got it. So, yeah, I agree. All right, let's take a break. You're live in local Real Talk Freedom, 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. Want to join the fun? Now's your chance, 910-333-0139. 910-333-0139. We'll be right back. Freedom 97.1. Hello, Sean. Of these specials and many, many more at your locally owned and operated Richlands Piggly Wiggly, where good things cost less. Down home, down the street, Highway 24 Richlands. Corned beef brisket flats are only $4.99 a pound. Whole top sirloin is $5.99 a pound. Top sirloin fillets, $8.99 a pound. 10 pounds or more fresh ground beef is only $2.59 a pound. Whole bone in pork. One, just a dollar fifty nine a pound. Over in produce, crisp green cabbage, just forty nine cents a pound, and you get a one pound bag of peeled baby carrots for just ninety nine cents. And enjoy down home country cooking in the deli seven days a week in the store. You can dine in or take out, featuring hot fresh chicken that will make you smile. Country breakfast starts at five thirty a.m. daily at your Richlands Piggly Wiggly. The deli is home to the famous Merle Bowl. You can also take advantage of the fast friendly pharmacy located in. Out of Richlands Piggly Wiggly. Richlands Piggly Wiggly, down home down the street. Highway 24 Richlands. Remember, stay big with the P. In a season of falling temperatures and rising energy bills, your local Brian professional is always ready. Standing by to protect your home's comfort. 
and defend you from uncomfortable temperatures and the higher energy bills associated with them. Ready to do whatever it takes for your home, your family, and you to be comfortable without breaking the bank. Because when the temperature falls, that's when your local Brian professional turns up the heat efficiently. Call the AC and air conditioning at 346-4311 and let them keep you comfortable this winter. Down AC and air conditioning serving our community for over 25 years. Also, Down East can help you with your home guttering needs. Call Down East today at 346-4311. Brian, whatever it takes. Hey, race fans, do it for All America Speedway, 4744 Richlands Highway, Jacksonville's action attraction presents the National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 250, featuring the Z Max Cars Tour, this Saturday, March 23rd at 7 p.m., featuring the biggest names in short track racing. Get ready for some fun and excitement as the racing Underway. Reserve your spot now. General admission tickets, $25. Seniors, military, kids 6 to 12, $12 cash gate. Kids 5 and under free. The best tickets available online at newriverspeedway.com forward slash tickets. It's the National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 250 this Saturday, March 23rd at 7 p.m. And the only place you're going to see it is a New River All-America Speedway. 4744 Richlands Highway, Jacksonville. It's live and local. Real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. We're back. I remember if you want to join the fun, 910-333-0139, 910-333-0139. Okay, back to uh, yeah, I, I, IBCs and everything else. I have a question on that because this is the opinion that I got last night. Tell me if I'm right or wrong because I don't understand all the mental health field. I've learned a lot through you, but I got the impression that Trillium was saying that like Carter County is pulling out from the alliance that they have with Onslow because they're going to be doing their own. Does that mean that Dix is going to get less money from Trillium now? Because instead of having a three-county effort, it's going to one? No, um, because... Um, Craven County puts money in. Um, Carrick County puts in um, about a hundred thousand um, dollars. But if they're building their own, they're building their own. So that means Onslow is not going to get that hundred thousand. Correct. And Onslow is, is wanting Trillium to kick in, which they should. I mean, you got to understand, Trillium has a lot of money. Do we run into the danger eventually if, like, if Craven pulls out and Carteret pulls out? Will Dix be able to sustain itself? It can sustain itself, yes. Um, because, I mean, some of the people that come in there have insurance, so they can it's sustain it through um, insurance billing. That's good. And Trillium, but see, Trillium has pumped a lot of money into William uh, uh, Wilmington. Trillium has pumped a lot of money into Greenville because Trillium's main office is up in the Greenville area. Oh, I see. Um, so what I was saying to Trillium is basically you need to kick in some money here, especially because a, sheer, not, a lot of the cases that are coming into Wilmington, for example, are, are from coming here. from Oslo. So they're like, start kicking some money our way, which I agree with 100%. But we're sending the cases there, so somebody's got to pay for them well, there because we don't have a facility here. Trillium's got a big two-story <laughs> building. I used to work there right down um, – over there by um, right on Center Street. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, Trillium, most of Trillium's employees work from home now. No one's in that building. Hmm. Why don't they turn that building into an acute care facility? That'd be good. I mean, it's two story, but it's going to, you know, you yeah. could fit some people in. You could re retrofit it. Right. Uh, okay. Good morning. Who's this? Good morning. It's Jeanette. How are you? I'm fine, Jeanette. What's up? Good morning, Jeanette. So Good morning. My thoughts um, are exactly in the, in the sense that Anzo County, that those that, like, um, you know, again, I understand, like, uh, the comment was mentioned about sometimes they don't belong in the jail, and that is accurate. However, if they're a harm to themselves or society, that's where they end up. And so uh, a perfect solution would be a mental health facility that's in close proximity to the county jail, because so many do get released because we don't have the capabilities of housing them. And if they still need mental health, 
there's nowhere for them to go. Well, the uh, sheriff's office has a transport unit, transport team, and if they are, if there's a need to go to some other location, and they transport them out of the county, sometimes all the way to Asheville, they transport them everywhere. But uh, to transport them to another facility anywhere in Oslo County would be, you know, that would be chump change. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, well now there's like having the facility very in close proximity to where they could be housed for other charges that have to do with if they're committing crimes with mental illness and doing their time, when they get out, they're still going to have issues. Sure, absolutely. Um, so that's, that's my biggest thing. It's like they have to work in close proximity with law enforcement because a lot of, unfortunately, the mentally, uh, to be honest, you know, uh, in advance with how they're, um, that, like, through, through uh, you mentioned Teladoc. Yeah. That's exactly, that's actually how they're, they're, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, diagnosed or how they're treated in, in the facility. Mm -hmm. There is no mental health on premise. It's all done through teledoc. So right there alone, see what I'm saying? Your your opinion as far as that goes is is so true because they need to see physicians in person. I agree with that. Yeah, I, 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 I'm, a, I, you know, I'm a novice in that area, but I would assume that uh, I mean, be kind of like me interviewing a guy uh, via uh, Skype or whatever for during. And I'm talking about interviewing as law enforcement. Right. No, mm -hmm. I got to look at your eyes. I've got to feel you. I yes. got to watch your body language. That's where yeah, it counts. So I agree. We're in very short supply of mental health professionals, yep. whether it be you know private or through through the county itself, and it's a shame because. Unfortunately, what happens is a lot of them come in, get released, and then they make their way back in. And so it, it, it's a very sad situation because definitely this county needs some mental health uh, help in regards okay. to the citizens, the people who live here. I, well, think, I, I think we all agree. I definitely think that what the county mm -hmm. needs is someone on staff, a counselor to, that treats. And I don't mean just sees them one time. I mean weekly therapy for while they're in jail because there's some people have been sitting in jail over there two, three, four years. Um, to treat them there. Absolutely. And I've had, I, I, I can definitely say from experience, I had certain inmates that waited over a year to get into Cherry or get into another facility. And wow. in terms of waiting, like, again, I'm not a mental health professional like you mentioned, but the training or whatever we've accomplished doesn't qualify to treat that person who needs some serious help because we have a different role to play. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, that, that that absolutely is happening where, unfortunately, so many people have the challenges of not only having to deal with being in the jail, but then if you come in and you have mental health issues, that, you know, unfortunately, they have to be addressed. Um, hopefully, again, like you said, in a facility that could long term help them or whatever they need, you know, so that when they are released, they're not just they're prepared to face those challenges. Okay, you know? uh, I agree. All right. Hey, man, thank you for the thank call. You. Thank, thank you. you. Very good. Good call. Good information. I think we have another caller. Good morning. Who's this? I think it's Phil. Hey, Phil. Phil. Yes, Phil. Hey, Phil. I work for a transport company, a private transport company. There's been times that a patient has been IBC and, and we're transporting them to another hospital for medical reasons or transport them to a mental health facility. Mm -hmm. There's been times that you know, IBC page, he has that law enforcement right. Yeah. Correct. And when we say that, then they'll say, well, we'll just disregard the IBC and you guys can transport. No. It's That's designed by a magistrate or a judge. Yes. A law enforcement has to ride with us. Correct. The hospitals get upset with us about the situation. Too bad. <laughs> yeah. But the, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, there's a assisted living facility on McDaniel Drive is not operating. And I'm looking into it now because I want to get with the representatives of, the, of this, you know, the House representatives in the state uh, senator here and the federal side to see about using that for mental health or rehab center. Mental health is what's needed. I'm, I'm not saying we don't need rehab because we do, but a it's facility would be a perfect place. Absolutely. Yes. It, it, it's on the Daniel Drive. Okay. 
Well, you mean the one over by the Walmart? Yes. I know I know it's been renovated because it had major hurricane damage from Florence. Yes. I, yeah. Florence. Um, but I don't think they've used it ever since then. I don't think so. Uh, I might be wrong, but I know they. I know it was That'd renovated. Be a perfect place for a little. Yeah, house. I agree. That would be a, that would be a perfect place. Because it, it's yeah. right there by the bus line and yep. everything. Yeah, and it's and there's hotels if family members need to come and they're coming yeah. in. Um, Stay and yeah. everything. Yeah, but it's that would uh, something like an assisted living facility. Like I said, those type of so nursing old nursing homes that aren't in use anymore or whatever. Those are perfect because they've already got the facilities. They've got nurses stations. Yeah. They've got rooms. They've got, got a dining hall, room. all of it. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. We need something like that. And they've got doors that you can lock. It's yep. Here, you know. Absolutely. So I'm I'm going to look more into that see if it's still unoccupied, and I'll get back with you guys. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Good move, Phil. Thank you. All right. Have a good on YouTube. Time. Let's take a break. You're live in local Real Talk Freedom 97.1 AM WSB. Freedom 91 WSME. If you're looking for a home or perhaps you want to sell your house, why would you not pick a realtor that knows Eastern North Carolina? Candy Brown Thompson has lived her entire life in this area and knows the territory like the back of her hand. She's a realtor with Century 21 Champion in Jacksonville and is known as a professional that will do everything possible to find the right home to meet your needs. It matters not whether you're looking for a small starter home or you're ready for a larger home. Candy will stick her neck out and check out homes throughout the eastern part of the state. She's known to look high and low and show you as many houses as you want until you have found the perfect house you can turn into a home. Throughout the process, she treats you with grace, confidence, and you'll love her sense of humor. For a realtor dedicated to her clients, give Candy Brown Thompson of Century 21 Champion a call at 910-787-5600. That's 910-787-5600. Chico's Tires, 2320 Wilmington Highway, is Jacksonville's oldest tire company, and now Jacksonville's newest tire company is Little Chico's, located at 1675 North Marine Boulevard. Little Chico's carries all the major brands and all sizes, such as Michelin, Goodyear, BF Goodrich, Bridgestone, and many others, and all new tires have warranty. In addition to a great selection of new tires, Little Chico's has used tires starting at only $30. In addition to new and used tires, Little Chico's does brake service, minor auto or truck repair, expert custom window tinting, and towing. So if you need tires, new or used, brake service, minor auto or truck repair, expert window tinting, or if you need a tow, visit Jacksonville's newest tire store, Little Chico's, 1675 North Marine Boulevard. By phone, 910 for Little Chico's Tire Service, located at 1675 North Marine Boulevard, right here in Jacksonville. Have you gotten your copy of Topsail Times newspaper this week? If not, did you know that Topsail Times is Topsail Area's only local newspaper in print? Started a little over a year ago, we now have over 1,500 online subscribers and 5,000 printed copies that go out every two weeks. And we never charge our readers. Information should be free to our readers, and we stick by that. Looking for an idea for date night? Want to learn some local history? How about asking a veterinarian about your pet? These things and more are available in each copy of the Topsail Times newspaper. Want to get the word out about your business? We offer great rates for full-color ads, and the online paper version is always included for free. Need help designing the perfect ad? We can do that, too. We're always looking for human interest, so start writing. And we love local photos, too. Check out our website at topsiltimes.net, where you can find out where to pick up a copy or check out our latest publication online. Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning, your trusted local carrier indoor weather team. So we all have heating and air conditioning needs since 1967. Now offers residential and commercial duct and dryer vent cleaning. And now offers expert residential and commercial plumbing service. In case of a power outage due to a storm or for any reason, be prepared with a Generac generator for your home or business. Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning has Generac generators in stock ready to install today. Remember, better breathing comes with cleaner air. 
Let Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning improve the air quality in your home or business with professional air duct cleaning. As always, Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning is available 24-7 for all your heating, cooling, and plumbing emergency needs. Turn to the carrier experts. Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning, locations in Jacksonville and Hampstead. Visit online, HumphreyHeating.com. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram, Humphrey Heating and Air Conditioning, since 1967. Relax, we're on the way. Freedom 97.1 WSME. It's live and local real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. Okay, we're back. And, um, coming up here in just a couple of minutes, we've got a young man in the office, and we're going to be talking at him at length, but uh, we'll introduce you right now. Come on up to the microphone, George. Hey, morning. Good morning. How are you? George Cormos, is that right? Yes, sir. Good. Welcome aboard. He's one of those libertarian guys, a member of the libertarian party. Yes, indeed. Good. I'm not a member of any party. Congratulations. <laughs> That's right. I lead the pack. My group is in charge. Statistically, it, yeah, right now. That's right. So anyway, I was, I was looking over some of your stuff earlier, and, um, and I'm like, well, maybe I'm libertarian. I don't know. Just <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, I was driving on the way here this morning. I heard you um, mention that about <laughs> the, uh, the statement right there. I started off with saying there's – not much of a discernible difference between the Republican Party and the Democrat right. Party. Um, I've sort of said the same thing. So the, the main reason I come out and say that is basically my uh, my perception or my experience with what happened during COVID. You know, I think the biggest thing that we all really observed and people just aren't really sure what they want to call it basically is one side of the party did exactly the same thing that the other side of the party did. Yeah. Or I should say, well, of the unit party, the way we refer it, refer to it in libertarian circles. But that basically, right, right, right the, the, the unit like party. That. Actually, if you see the uh, campaign for Mike Ross, uh, for libertarian candidate for uh, for government for governor, uh, he's actually got the uh, campaign slogan of "Fire the Unit Party." And there's other people out there in libertarian circles that um, use similar versions of mm -hmm. of that. But essentially, what what I'm saying, or my my perception, my my reality during that COVID thing is that basically uh, Trump was in office, and I remember thinking to myself, like, wow, with what glee he signs away, you know, X trillion dollars of hush money that we all got paid to stay at home, essentially. And then the next guy came in, Biden, and I was like, oh, I wonder how things are going to change, and he did exactly the same thing. And in spades, so <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. And for me, when um, you know, the the real moment, the the catalyst about why I uh, actually used to be a registered Republican, really for my whole life, basically from the moment that I was 18 years old, um, and I was out there protesting with the Tea Party at the height of the of that movement, and I was out there, um saying a great deal of not very nice things about former president obama and about the whole libertarian or excuse me the whole liberal movement that they've pushed this whole time um but for me what when it came to a head is basically i think i want to say about january 2nd uh ballpark 2022 possibly it was sort of towards the end of all the COVID shutdowns and everything and i remember um, it was sort of one of these stories that no one notices. It's almost like, oh, everyone's drunk and hungover still from New Year's Eve. No one's paying attention. And then I saw the stories like, and then Congress gave themselves a raise. Yeah. And I was thinking to myself, like, my goodness, you guys actually think you did a good job, <laughs> you know? And I was sort of reflecting on that. And there I was standing on my soapbox talking about, oh, this, this should be like this and that should be like that. And my wife basically is like, yeah, well, what are you going to do about it? And I said, hold my beer, and <laughs> here I am. Here we're on for the ride. Yes, sir. All right, George, we're going to take about a 60-second break here, do a little Fox News, and then we'll be back on the other side with a lot more. Folks, if you've got a question, hang on to it for a little while. Listen for just a little longer, and then I'll tell you when you could call in if you so desire. You're live on local Real Talk, Freedom 97.1, 11.20 a.m., WSME, Fox News is now. WSME, Camp Lejeune, 246CJ, Jacksonville. Fox News, I'm Chris Foster. It's primary day in Arizona, Florida, Illinois, Kansas, and Ohio, where Republicans are choosing a Senate candidate. When I win this evening, it's going to be about unifying the Republican Party. State Senator Matt Dolan on Fox. Former President Trump endorses businessman Bernie Marino. The other candidate is Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRose. The incumbent is Democrat Sherrod Brown. 
former President Trump says any Jewish person who votes for Democrats hates their religion and should be ashamed of themselves. He had been asked in an interview about the Democrats' growing criticism of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his handling of the war in Gaza. The comments sparking immediate backlash from the White House and Jewish leaders. A White House spokesman calling the comments vile and unhinged anti-Semitic rhetoric. Fox's Chris Tomeo. Hong Kong passes a new national security law expanding the government's power to crack down on dissent. And Japan raises its interest rates for the first time in 17 years. They had been below zero to stimulate the economy. America's listening to Fox News. Freedom 97.1. WSME. It's live and local. Real talk. And we are back uh, about a minute after 8 o'clock. And in the studio with us, George Cormos, a libertarian. I, you know, libertarian is not the same thing as liberal, is it? No, sir. Okay. A lot of people make that mistake um if they do i hope it's at the ballot box thinking that the l next to my name is for liberal and i'll take the vote but certainly <laughs> other than that ideology there are not enough liberals in uh, this part of the state for you to uh, <laughs> make it a headway on that one <laughs> probably not um but, uh, yeah um libertarian just give me an overview I know how it sort of kind of how it came to pass because you had nowhere, nowhere else to go. You wanted a party, but you didn't want to come over to be unaffiliated or independent, as I call it. Uh, so you guys had to go somewhere. And we would you think that most of those who uh, classify themselves as libertarians today are leaning towards the left or towards the right? So I think it actually varies regionally. I'd say that the people I've run across out here in Onslow County and eastern North Carolina um, – mm -hmm. More specifically, with the Cape Fear Libertarian Party, which is a regional group down from uh, Wilmington. Wilmington. Yeah, they're they're they lean pretty left anyway. That area does. So I, I was actually going to say that most of the people that I sort of chum around with out here tend to lean a little bit. We, we um we'll have our get-togethers, and I've certainly uh, conversations, especially when it comes from other vast area of uh, the empire, so to speak, where they'll, you know, libertarians will come up and it'll be a very left leaning stroke. And I, I understand why, you know, for the large swaths of the voting population, they're sort of having a hard time, you know, putting a finger on what exactly it is. And I, I'd like to say that it's probably because. I mean, if what defines you is the sum of your, you know, accomplishments, then Yes, as the Libertarian Party, you know, we need to get people, more and more people elected. When you get people elected, then you can start saying, ah, yes, they stand for X, Y, Z, because that individual, that representative came out there and did X, Y, Z. And and that's one of the issues that I sort of see right now. Ideo ideologically, I believe that they do have the um, the correct mix of spices, if you will. I'd say that the one the reason it, uh, I was attracted over to the Libertarian Party as opposed to, you know, say just shunning being registered as a Republican like previously is because I really wanted some uh, some a platform, a chance to actually get out there and say certain messaging. Like, for example, I just don't see the difference in what these two parties are doing. Like every single election cycle, we go through the same um I'm sorry to use the same word, vicious cycle of basically watching, you know, panic inducing news, getting us to fear our neighbors, fear each other, hate each other to some extent. And it's all done for no good reason other than they need votes. And the best motivator sometimes, unfortunately, is fear. So happens that way. Now, a couple of just a few questions here, real quick. Like, uh, build the wall. We need a path to citizenship. Constitution. It exists, yes. Please don't disrespect it. What about the Constitution specifically, though? Let's go to the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment? Very supportive of the Second Amendment, actually. I'm actually a fan. Um, so it's not something I have written very many places, but uh, I think you were just looking up my stuff on, on Ballotpedia. And uh, one thing that I did write in there is I'm actually um, – I'm against the principle that gun-free zones actually keep us safe. More specifically, <laughs> I'm against the idea that gun-free zones, schools specifically, um, actually do anything to help keep our children safe. So, I mean, um, essentially, if I were to be given a chance to have any sort of effect on the conversation or on policy that would would actually give us a chance to make something happen, I would actually like to see – you know, not not necessarily tell anyone or mandate that anyone actually be armed or have any sort 
of more, um, what's the word I'm looking for here, kinetic force power, if you will, mm -hmm. within the school. But certainly, if you're a teacher and you choose to, you know, and you're qualified, and you're qualified, yes, that's the other, the other, um, I'd say stipulation is there should be some sort of reasonable standard for are you qualified to handle this weapon? But I don't see why writ large, especially like say for example, large campuses, universities, why we would say, oh yes, in this, you know, exaggerations, ten thousand square miles area, this is a no no gun zone because this is a university or whatever it is. I'd say there's plenty of students, plenty of females. Um, I'm, I'm a father of two young girls, and I just think to myself, mm -hmm. like, hmm, I wonder what kind of reality they're going to have by the time they get to college. And I mean, we can start roping in a whole bunch of other topics over here. We can talk about we can talk about Riley Gaines and what have what happened with, um, you know, males actually playing in female sports. I think about like, goodness, am I going to have a future where I have to sit my girls down and say to them, like, listen, um, I know you love soccer, but uh this other young man over here thinks he's a girl too, and you're going to have to play against them. I mean, I remember seeing the picture of, um, I'm sure everyone has, Riley Gaines looking up at what's his oh, name, yes. being like, I can't believe they gave him gold, you know, in this competition. And I think to myself, like, man, that's my girl's future, and and I hate it. And so I'm going to do something about it. And, you know, back again to, okay, what about um what about protection on campus like well what's my girl gonna what am i gonna say to her am i gonna say look here kid now if you go anywhere just make sure you don't go too far off or else you might find yourself you know uh traveling packs <laughs> traveling but you know these are all, it's all good ideas but at the same time like why not actually provide people the legal means to mm -hmm. protect themselves yeah gun free zone is a is a, a target <laughs> It's easy a, targets. It's a soft target is what we call in the military. Yep. There's, there's hard targets and then there's soft targets. Hard targets is basically you got guys with guns. Mm -hmm. Soft targets is well, everybody else. Everybody else. Voter ID. Absolutely for it. Um, actually, it's a real quick, interesting story. Um, I got invited to the NAACP's Get the Vote Out rally in Pitt County not too long ago and uh it was a bit strange because one i was like huh i don't think they know my pol my politics uh to begin this invitation but nevertheless i showed up and um among the many things i found strange was the the mixture of preaching from the pulpit to then spin that into a policy preference almost as if jesus himself you know Yea, verily declares that this is the thing to do. And I thought to myself, like, who is this this man, this preacher who is up there, you know, all fire and brimstone, telling me a story that I've heard before somewhere in church, and then turning around and literally within a split second saying, and that's why my grandmother or my mother, who's 90 some years old, shouldn't have, shouldn't be asked to show a uh, picture ID when voting. And I thought to myself, like, Man, I must have I must have missed the beat somewhere because I have no idea how one story was related to the other. And I don't know how that equates to racism. I really don't. So well, you know, when I go I've got a, a library card, I've got a Sam's card, I've got, you know, hunting license, well a combined sportsman's license, I've got driver's license, I've got um, concealed carry. Parent, concealed carry. I've got I've got ID way beyond belief, including some federal ID, but I gotta show it. But the thing about it is you had to use your ID to get those IDs. That's right. I've had the uh, pleasure of being carded to sh ask to show a picture ID when trying to buy a lighter in the past. So really, yeah, you know, just just kind of weighing <laughs> what's important enough to ask for some documentation I, and what's. Mm -hmm. I got carded buying a can of paint one time, a spray can. Really? Yes. Why? That's because of the, the huffers and the huffers. graffiti artists. <laughs> Yeah. My God, like, that, I thought what? that was a Pam thing. Oh, it's crazy. Because, I mean, you know, we, we had overdoses on Pam with Pam years ago. Yes. Spray it in the bag. Glue. Spray it in the bag. Airplane is notorious. There's, um, <laughs> yeah, there's, I've, um, interestingly enough, so I, a little bit of background for myself. I don't, I think we sort of mentioned that, but the um, audience might not know. But so I'm actually originally from Romania and uh, we immigrated. I'll add that. <laughs> uh, we immigrated here in 96, but 
among the many things I could say about what's good or bad about, uh, you know, the, uh, the old country's culture, um, I would say I've seen plenty of people actually engage in this, this glue huffing thing. And it's, mm. um, it's very interesting to say the less to, to compare that to the crack shuffle you might observe up in Baltimore. Um, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You mentioned military. Talk about it. Sure. Yeah. So let's see. Um, immigrate 96, we settled in Colorado and then I graduated high school in 05. And then a couple of years after that, I actually joined the Navy. Um, Yay. Yeah, yeah. Um, my, um, my, uh, my specialty or my rating as a call it is a CTI. It's cryptologic technician interpretive, which means I'm a military linguist or, uh, was a military linguist at the time. My language is Russian. So I do speak fluent Russian. And currently I am actually a department of defense contractor linguist out here with the Marines at Camp Lejeune. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, been doing that for a little bit now. Um, I did eight years total of active duty and three years of reserve duty. And I actually was one of the individuals who refused to take the COVID jab. And I was uh, unceremoniously pushed out of the reserves because of that. Mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> it's odd the way things work, but basically I was all set, ready to go into the office, you know, like the next weekend to sign another year extension. And then uh, they said, yeah, 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 everything's great. We just need you to go ahead and do this one other little thing right here. And then I was like, no, I don't, you know, I don't believe in this. And it's, it's kind of funny because the, the whole idea of a vaccine or, you know, um, getting any sort of shot, if it's a flu shot or whatever it is, is I never had any sort of objection to it right up. I realized that they were really pushing it. I was going to do it right up until I realized something was weird about the entire process of how all of that went down from locking us into our homes, from getting people fired. That's not standard behavior. If something is supposed to be good for you, if it's good for you, that's great. Let me decide it's good for me and then I'll join you, you know, but what ended up happening is I realized as they said to me here, fill out this uh, religious exemption form. And, um, I'm sure you all know the, um, the gesture, but you know exactly where they filed that uh, mm -hmm. as soon as they turned it in. So, so yeah, that was sort of the, um, a little bit of the background, more about sort of my military career and kind of that, that also in, in a way did inform really what my policies are now, what my ideology, my, what my ideological line is right now. And also why I'm running because at the end of the day, I don't see my competitor, Greg Murphy saying, anything about hey maybe that was wrong or hey hmm, that doesn't equate to freedom the thing that we sit here and talk about all the time that to me was the exact flesh and blood uh, flesh and blood embodiment of what government oppression is you know and i don't know how many people out there have read the history of romania not that is a required reading on anyone's list <laughs> i've but, talked to people <laughs> there on ham radio but that's about it <laughs> yeah um but it's a it's a very difficult history if you will and and um my father and my uncle before me and you know my parents they, they told me a lot about it and how how it was and told me about food rations towards the end of the communist period and what exactly it is to have to get to have to sit in a line to wait three four hours in the morning to get your daily ration of milk and and all sorts of manners of things or what exactly it is for an individual to so we're used to talking about oh immigrants are illegally crossing into America. Well, imagine a country where you have to illegally escape out. Mm. Like that was, that was the reality mm -hmm. then, you know, and they, they talk about all these things about just how much power government has, just how much, however present it is in every single administration and every single step of your daily life. And I think to myself like, Hey, you know, they, like my dad came here because it was basically his dream for us to go to the land of milk and honey where there's opportunity to actually go and do that, which, you know, each one of us with enough hard work can achieve. And then I turn around and I actually see that even here, if we're not careful, we can have a situation where actually that's all just lip service. In the reality, 
that we see is that we are controlled at every step. How old were you when you got here? Nine and a half. So your memory is very vivid then. Um, it is, but not not of any communist period. I was four years old. No, I'm communist. talking about coming here for the first time. Ah, yes, yes. Celebration for moving. Uh, I mean, as a kid, probably not. I think the first thing that happened is we uh, ran across the Fourth of July celebration. I think we showed up like end of June, and the, for my first interaction was, "Why? <laughs> Why are they doing this? It's not New Year's. New Year's was the only time that I remember seeing fireworks." And, and, the and past, you understand so. now. And now I do. Now I get it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Ladies, do you got questions? Yes, I wanted to ask you about emergency powers. I know like with the COVID, how the government took over and enacted emergency powers over the nation. What's your feeling on that? Yeah, I'd really like to see some sort of a check against that. I, um, I thought it was so incredibly convenient for everyone in Congress or in the House of Representatives specifically, which is what I'm trying to, to get to. It was so incredibly convenient of them to... Um, sort of not take any action. They essentially all sort of hid behind the administrative um, body of the executive branch's agencies and basically said, oh, you know, we, it's not us that are doing, like if you turn around and say, hey, Congressman Murphy, you did X, Y, Z, he has the protection to say, no, nah, well, I didn't do it. It was actually the administrative agencies that did that, the CDC and all the other um, uh, players involved. I'd actually like to see a situation where we, uh, you know, the House of Representatives would come out and say, you know, limitation on declarations of emergency. If we're talking about if you get get to have a vote on it within two weeks, the people should get to have a vote on just how long we're willing to actually accept emergency powers, right? Um, and the reason I the reason I, I really want to double down on the idea of like we need ways to rein in the administrative juggernaut that is the executive branch now is it's not just it's not just one side of the unit party you know like when the other side of the party or the other the other republicans are in for example they do have a tendency to basically do the same thing the democrats and republicans more or less will oppose a bad idea seemingly right up until it's their chance and then they'll just engage in similar bad ideas and bad policies in my opinion um so i'm not, sorry if i rambled a little bit but no, that's sort of my where my mind's at on that no you you answered it well kelly anything you had mentioned um path to citizenship what do you mean what are you talking about what is your idea of that I essentially am saying that basically if someone did come here legally, that if they are not a criminal, uh, if they are not, um, and what I mean by that, if they're not guilty of uh, any sort of violent offense or a fraud or things of that nature, theft, um, I do think that we need to we need to be a little more uh, a little more welcoming. The old, uh, you know, uh, bienvenido is, is basically not real. When, when you turn around and start calling people or start using words to make it seem like everyone that's coming across the border legally is actually carrying a pound of fentanyl cocaine and willing to, you know, see your kid overdose. That's not really true. And I sort of, um, I understand that the current um, angle of the conservative talking points is essentially they're criminals. They are actually bringing in very, you know, nefarious activities and, and items and it's it's difficult to even sit here and say these things like hey we need to be a little more loving towards our our neighbor so to speak when you've got headlines like you know that guy that killed that young lady out in georgia um yeah i i get it i get it. at the same time though um i sit and i think to myself and i i have a real struggle with what i hear from gop paul and, and the idea of, um, as it's often claimed, family values that seems to come across, right? Uh, theoretically, these are like Christian values, if I'm not mistaken. Family values, Christian values. Supposed it's to be. Supposed to be. They're, they are one and the same. And yet, that same grouping of family values then turns around and says some stuff that's just really, really not biblical. And I'm sorry to say that to anyone that might be having a hard time accepting that, but just just think about it real quick. 
of everything that we sit and listen through on every Sunday, do you turn around then and say, actually, these people are not welcome here because I don't like them mm -hmm. for various reasons. And kind of circling it back to that little experience or the little conversation about the, you know, having to sneak out instead of having to sneak in. Um, I'm going to give you a personal story. It's uh, one story is of my dad, one story is of my uncle, right? Um, <clears throat> in 86, my uncle was able to, able to escape Romania and he ran into Yugoslavia. From there, him and the party they were with, they went on foot. They got close enough to when they were apprehended by local police, they were delivered to a, um, a refugee center in Austria. From there, he was able to get um, political asylum, made it to the States, has built a great career for himself, an outstanding citizen. My father also ran across the border, um, I think in 87, and he was arrested by police in Hungary, in Budapest. Um, the police there, instead, they returned him back to Romania, where he was greeted with about a year's worth of uh, wage garnishment at about the tune of 70%, and um, you know some, some additional work. And of course, all your family friends are now like, ooh, you're persona non grata, we're mm -hmm. not messing with you. So I say all that to kind of just bring in the conversation like okay what about our southern border right now and i think about it i'm like you know there are there are laws that are good laws good man-made laws even sometimes but there are other times when you sit here and think of the, the, the argument is always like yeah well they are breaking the law the fact that they are just crossing the border in and of itself is the crime and I think to myself, like, yeah, a crime against who, though? Because that's not necessarily a crime against God, is it? What? These people are actually trying to escape possible death in their country. You know, like, it's hard for us in America to really appreciate what it actually means to not have food. <laughs> what it actually means to not be safe in your home, whether it's from street gangs or whether it's from the government. It could be from anybody, you know. And it's very easy for us to that'd be like, well, they're breaking the law and they need to wait their turn. They need to sit there. You got to file the paperwork, wait however many years it takes to get, maybe you get a visa lottery. Maybe the numbers will change. Uh, I get it, but I just have a hard time with what background I come from to then turn around and be what I describe as nothing short of callous. Question for you, you mentioned that you're coming across the border. Do you feel like, because we've had such large increases in numbers of people coming across the border, they're coming across, I, I won't call it semi-legal because we're accepting them, accepting their asylum request to begin with until a judge hears it, right? They're coming across at the points, the checkpoints, right? Do you think there's a conspiracy among the drug cartel and others to, yes, swarm the borders with all of these people? And we'll let the drug runners cross into El, from El Paso into Texas. Where, you know, they'll sneak across the border at non-checkpoints. That's where the drugs are coming from. So I, I, I do, actually. I'm actually not that um, um, oblivious to the entire, dr entire drug run scheme. Um, and I, I do think that they are using these people that are basically mm -hmm. in a very, they're in dire straits I've and said that they, they need something, they're using them. I just don't see what exactly um, the current political line coming from, uh, including my competitor, is really going to do to solve anything. Um, you know, if you're going to build a wall, yeah, great, build a wall. It should be built. It definitely should have been built already. Um, but then you turn around and sort of ignore the other aspect of you know the reason that people are even trying to come over here i think is a not a you know not a fully honest conversation kind of a thing and as far as if we talk about conspiracy theories um it is not lost on me that i you know there is one side of the unit party who's very much banked on being able to use said individuals that come in and try to pad their number I I don't, their numbers. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think they're going to become Democrat. Yeah, I mean it's a it's a far it's a far shot, but you know it's it's not a great strategy, but it's a strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean if you if you just 
follow the to follow to the natural conclusion of what could happen is you come in and it's so easy to get a driver's license and you know if some states don't even require a driver's license to vote i mean you know it's it's all right there easy you know for the picking so to speak okay let's take a break do some weather if anybody has a call we'll hold uh george here for a few more minutes if, if he's okay with that and uh you can give him a ringy ding a 910-333-0139 you're live and local we'll talk freedom 7.1, 1120 AM, WSME, and we'll be right back. WSME, the best deal for the grill is at Jones LP Gas and Oil Company. Friday from 8 AM to closing at 5, Jones LP Gas and Oil Company will fill your 20-pound LP gas grill cylinder for only $11. You heard that right. Each Friday till closing, you can have your 20-pound LP gas cylinder filled for only $11 at Jones Gas and Oil Company, 3881 Wilmington Highway in Heart of Verona. In addition to saving money on your LP gas for the grill, Jones Gas and Oil is your full-service gas and oil company serving residential, commercial, and agricultural gas and oil needs, as well as gas appliances, LP replacement parts, fill cylinders, and tankless water heaters, and they offer a 10% military discount on installation. Remember to get that cylinder filled every Friday until closing for only $11. Jones Gas and Oil, 3881, the Old Wilmington Highway, Verona, phone 910-346-6384. Welcome to Luna Associates Family Dentistry, where we love to make you smile. Now proud to be working with Drs. Kim and Tommy Morgan, formerly Morgan Family Dentistry, the Jacksonville and Richlands Morgan Office of Lane and Associates Family Dentistry blends the latest technology with personal care and attention so you have an amazing dental experience. The offices of Lane and Associates welcome all ages and accepts all major insurances, including military. Lane and Associates Family Dentistry has been serving the state of North Carolina for over 40 years with two locations in Jacksonville, Richlands and Maysville. Call for an appointment today at 877-LANE-DDS or online at lanedds.com. Welcome to Lane & Associates Family Dentistry. Hello, shoppers. Take advantage of these specials and many, many more at your local owner and operator to the Wiggins store down on down the street where good things cost less. Main Street in downtown Maysville. How about corn beef brisket flash, four ninety nine a pound? Whole top sirloin is only five ninety nine a pound. Top sirloin fillet, eight ninety nine a pound, and ten pounds or more fresh ground beef is only two fifty nine a pound. Whole bone in pork loin, just a dollar fifty nine a pound. Over in produce, you get a pint of fresh blueberries, just three ninety nine. Jumbo green bell peppers, ninety nine cents each, and you also get. Crisp green cabbage, 49 cents a pound. And you get a one pound bag of peeled baby carrots for just 99 cents. Also, you get two two liter size cocos pipe for just $5. That's your local owner and operator, Pig and Wiggy store, down home, down the street, where good things cost less. Main Street in Maysville. Remember, say big with (laughs) big. It's live and local real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. Small cap advisors in effect for a while this morning. This is your marine forecast to, uh, today. Offshore northwesterly winds 15 to 20 knots with gusts up to 30. But coming westerly 10 to 15 this afternoon, seas 3 to 5 feet, 2 to 3 near shore. Dominant period 5 seconds. Sounds and rivers choppy, diminishing to a moderate chop later this afternoon. Tomorrow. Southwesterly winds 15 to 20 knots, gust up to 25 people. Keep your boats ashore. Seas four to six feet, dominant period five seconds, sounds and rivers stopping. Thursday, northerly winds 10 to 15 knots, becoming northeasterly in the afternoon, two to four footers, sounds and rivers. Today, sunny, high 56, west winds nine to 11 miles an hour with 60 mile an hour gusts. Tonight, clear, cold, low of 43. Tomorrow, sunny, high of 70. Winds 9 to 15 miles an hour with 23 mile an hour gusts. Tomorrow night clear, cold again, low of 44. And on Thursday, sunny, high of 64. And not very not gusty at all, actually. Yay. Okay. Um, retired that. former um, prior Navy. Um, a knot versus a mile per hour. Uh-huh. Oh, no. Uh, there you go. It's uh, nautical miles per hour mm-hmm. is what the knot is. Not yep. as close to miles per hour, yeah. Yeah, miles per hour is about 1.2 mile, 1.2 times the miles, 1.2 times the uh, knots is uh, it's well, gonna be the I'll, miles per hour. I'll say this is that my uh, <laughs> my my it's fortunate in some ways and yet unfortunate in other ways as far as uh, being uh, 
being a sailor formerly mm -hmm. is I'll get sailor questions and then I have to admit like I'm sorry I actually You're not that <laughs> I actually was always in a dark room with no windows. I understand <laughs> so, that. We have a call. Good morning. Who's this? Good morning. This is Bill. Hi, Bill. What's oh, up? Yeah, I was calling. I was listening to uh, the, the uh, guest this morning. George. On, uh, George on his uh, views on some of the immigration, et cetera. And I, I know that where we have the, the main issue was on our southern border. Um, but what's going on in Europe and having to take care of things there. But if some of the areas of people that are coming into the southern border are so bad that it seems that we should be intervening and not, you know, what's going on in Europe is in Europe and you have different, you know, numerous nations there that deal with it. But it always seems to be us that has to intervene and get, you know, get that resolved. Uh, but here on our own continent, where you know the the mileage to some of the problem areas is not nearly as you know is distant. Um, that more, I, I don't know if there should be more emphasis on the Peace Corps ops and you know limited military ops to uh, as more of police actions to just try and resolve some of the issues that drive these people out of the. Uh, uh, Central American, you know, portion of our continent up through Mexico to our border. Okay. And, you know, it, it seemed like we had some very good things on the Donald Trump uh, set where it, it was getting resolved at the border, but uh, prevent it from even having to come to the border, you know, with it just... Uh, that had a little more emphasis, I guess, in the Central okay. American. In other words, let them, let them wait in, in New Mexico or wherever they got to wait until they have, they have a hearing, I guess, is what you're saying. Okay. For the ones who have gotten that far, okay. and then the other end, Peace Corps would be to, with police actions if you needed to, you know, put the uh, military in for some kind of police actions in those areas to resolve. Okay, okay. well, let George so answer the question here. We'll let George answer your question here. But thank you. So uh, I unfortunately don't really know that much about the Peace Corps and the le or the uh, say the legal framework under which they they operate. I don't so think I'd, they operate with military. Yeah, I, I unfortunately don't feel like I can answer the gentleman's question very well okay. because he 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 went off into a realm that I have not enough knowledge on, unfortunately. Okay, I think uh, basically what he's talking about is we need to spend more time dealing with the problems that we have at home than going into other countries and worrying about them. Is that a good thing? Or oh, bad? sure, sure. Yeah, so uh, I would say that definitely the Libertarian Party is uh, on currently on a very anti-war sort of footing mm -hmm. writ large. And I would say that less in line with the Libertarian Party a little bit than um, uh, a little bit more than others would be at the time. And what I mean by that is more specifically, let's talk about uh, our little forays into other countries or other geopolitical uh, incursions or interests. Um, I remember about two years ago, I was watching a debate between, it was a libertarian candidate running out in the 11th district out in Asheville. And he brought up this, uh, basically a party plank about uh, the Houthis, the plot of the Houthis and the situation out there and why, essentially the argument went, why are we giving or why are we selling weapons to the Saudis because they're committing atrocities in Yemen against the Houthis, you know? <laughs> and I, I don't necessarily hold the same line, you know, it's at the same time the the current conversation is almost changing in the same manner when it comes to Israel and Hamas. There's starting to be an interesting little separation of where it seems that in the interest of this uh, or in, from being the world's police, we're starting to drop a couple of uh, moral points that we used to hold very dear to and sort of a uh, gentleman sort of talked about Europe and about like let them deal with their own thing and I 
you know, I don't think it's a great idea to go out there and make promises to all the world that, yeah, we're going to keep you safe. Because right now what's basically happening is people are coming to cash in on them checks that were written back then by Kissinger and Clinton and everyone else. I was feeling all high and mighty of themselves after the fall of uh, the Soviet Union in 1990. But at the same time, we went out there and we made a promise to a country. We said, you go ahead and get rid of your nuclear weapons and we got you. Right. I mean, I'll, albeit the Russians said exactly the same thing to Ukraine. You go ahead and get rid of your nuclear weapons. And if America attacks you, we got you. Right. How's that working out? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so anyways, I, I say all that just to sort of kind of paint the framework of where I am uh, as opposed to because I, I understand certainly and it's this weird um, conflation of realms, if you will, because all of a sudden you have libertarians that were always anti-war by and large and now all of a sudden you have what seems to be a right of center push for what is it is it um not just protectionism uh economically but also a sort of shutting out or withdrawing from uh, our previous footprint so to speak and that all of a sudden seems to be a right side of the spectrum position which to me is the craziest 180 because i grew up in the era of george bush telling us that what we need to do is be patriots and defend those who seek freedom and democracy around the world and i'm just sort of baffled how is it that now about 15 years later oh it's a 180 now the guy pushing democracy across the world is is this guy who I'm not sure he realizes he's pushing democracy on the world Biden based on on some of his antics, but it's it was a strange shift. And the reason I I go into this whole uh, convoluted little uh, you know description is because it informs what people actually think and say and do. I see stuff that quite literally I can identify as Russian misinformation because. Part of my daily job is that to your job. that that it is my job. It is my job to identify what the Russians are doing and to call it out for what it is. Is that it's the foreign actions of a foreign government? Okay, we did have a call. Everybody hung up. Uh, uh, if you want to call now, give us a ring. You back, you know, nine one zero three 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 zero one three nine. Question for you on that: Do you think Russian intervention played any part in either twenty sixteen or twenty twenty in our elections? Um, minor. Not really any okay. more so than what we would do to any other country by basically. Well, we do it intentionally too. I mean, we got a propaganda unit. Come on. I mean, I don't think it's that crazy of a thing, or and I don't think it's necessarily uh, subversive foreign government action to take out an ad and say, "Hey, we don't like that guy. We like the other guy." Mm -hmm. That to me doesn't seem very sinister. Wouldn't that not be something? Some cases like firing on them, like if Russia would come out and say, "Hey, I really like Joe Biden." So nobody's going to vote for Joe Biden based upon our hatred for Russia. Did he, didn't he do that just recently? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it depends upon. I, I, I don't pay any attention to those guys. Not zero zilch. No, and we I mean, should not. The the guy who won his fifth term with a grand total of eighty seven percent of the vote is not exactly. Yeah, my, the other thirteen uh, percent of the people who voted are they're going to be missing in action. Yeah, yeah, he's not exactly the beacons of truth and freedom no, over there. Not at all, George. It has been a pleasure, sir. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been an interesting and, conversation. You know, we have a long time till the election, but yes. we don't. But we do. So uh, we got time to get you back in here again. Yes. Uh, if you would allow me one real quick Absolutely. thing, sure. I just wanted to put it out there to anyone listening that generally the Libertarians of Onslow County, we get together every third Wednesday over at Bob X. We're getting together. Marina Cafe, y'all. Yep, Bob X Marina Cafe. We're getting together tomorrow night. It's usually a small group. Not a lot of people, you know, pop in. But if any of you had. Uh, any desire to continue the conversation, or if you just want to get um, active with the Libertarian Party locally, come on by, 6 p.m. And suppose it's uh, not a Libertarian that wants to come? Uh, we are welcome to whoever wants to show up. Okay, they had good uh, time chowder and great shrimp baskets, by the they way. They do. Yes, they do. <laughs> I think Theo's coming back. We got Theo? Uh, I know it's a different caller. Is this Theo? No, it's somebody. No, a different one. one. Who's this? The other level. Uh, <laughs> As y'all call me. Yeah. Uh, this one calling this morning. Say, hey, um, it was interesting hearing your uh, guest this morning. Um, 
definitely some um, interesting views compared to what a lot of you guests have. Uh, I wouldn't mind picking your brain a little bit, sir. <laughs> Go ahead. But, uh, obviously, the end of the time today. Well, I don't want. To, I couldn't really get into it today. Obviously, okay. time is short. But uh, I'm interested. In, uh, you say y'all meet at uh, Bob Bex. Yes, there? sir. Yes, sir. Six p.m. Wednesday tomorrow. Every third Wednesday. Wednesday right? tomorrow. Uh, yep. Every, every third Wednesday. Every third I Wednesday. You. I might would like to come by and be a fly on the wall and at least here. <laughs> yeah, come on down. I got you. I, I, I was hearing the last comment you were making there on uh, Russian different, uh, disinformation and um, its effects on 2016 and 2020. And uh, I, I probably would lean on agreeing with you with they, they probably haven't done much more than they've done in the past. But I think because of the Internet and uh, that, they have been more effective in our last two election cycles at being able to disseminate their disinformation by putting it right in the hands of the American people. Um, so I think that might be a factor in that as well, but I could be wrong. I mean, it's, it's my two cents that basically, uh, all countries engage in this behavior. I think all of them to an extent, uh, some a little more overt, some a little more covert, all of them try to effectuate politics outside of their border. And I think Russia trying to do that here is quite literally just a matter of survival for them, essentially. And and I don't disagree with you. I just, in my opinion, which it is my opinion, it ain't fact, is that they've been more effective at it in our last two election cycles than they have in the past. I mean, certainly they have they have really um, ratcheted up government control of a great deal of things, and also as far as without getting into anything too uh, we should be talking about, but they definitely have have stepped up their game, so to speak, in in capabilities. Right, right. And, and from my observation, and it's been you know a, a layman's observation is that they're playing both sides to the middle. They're not just, <laughs> yeah, support, they're not just supporting the right; they're they're also you know supporting the left as well as from the report I've read. That way, they come across as a winner, even regardless <laughs> of the outcome. I've I've seen I've seen well, controversy. You know, um, um, is what they're trying to achieve is you know uh, disruption. So. Yeah. I believe I've seen political contributions from individuals. I know one guy that was in state government here. He worked for the state of North Carolina, but he contributed to both parties equally. So that when the time came for her, they would notice him <laughs> the way he couldn't be a loser. Oh my God. That's like going to the horse races well, and on everybody. Yeah. What I remember about Mark Rubio's report was that um, the Russians were funding the black lives matter rallies as well as pro Trump rallies. Not likely. Yeah, I mean, it's the the more the more you can show uh, unrest, disunion, the more you can use that to essentially um, anyone who's thinking, hey, maybe America is the uh, the horse to bet on, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Once you start seeing dysfunction, you start wondering, like, hmm. Are they actually that stable? Are they actually that trustworthy? And I, I think that is basically the, the the play. That's the play. Okay. Hey, Steve. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, guys. Y'all have a blessed day. You too. Thank you. And again, George, thank you for coming in. We'll get you back in here. Yes. All right. Much appreciated. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely have some uh, more in-depth conversation from you, as though we didn't today. Which, well, uh, I'm was, saying was again, I think he's been the most interesting candidate we've had on Absolutely. the show. Absolutely. Not a doubt. All right. Take a break. George, thank you. You're live in local Real Talk Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. WSME. Mohawk All Pet Protection and Warranty is the only cover protection and warranty for all pets, all accidents, all the time. Because your pets are family members too. No matter how you live, we've got you covered. Soft, luxurious, smart strand, forever clean carpet. Gorgeous, durable, solid tech, luxury, vital tile. Mohawk has the ultimate floor for every room in your home. That's suitable for all pets. For details, contact Watkins Floor Covering online at WatkinsNewFloor.com. Watkins Floor Covering. Thanking you for voting them the best of the best for 2023 in the flooring covering and carpet cleaning category. Watkins Floor Covering, they're more than just floors. It's custom showers, custom tubs, carpet cleaning, backsplashes, bathrooms, commercial, retail, and home flooring too. Watkins Floor Covering, family owned and operated since 1997 with locations in Jacksonville and Surf City. Watkins Floor Covering, you stand on it, we stand behind it. 
Tammy Fry Allstate, Swansboro, reminds you to check your mailbox and find your quote on homeowner's insurance. Tammy Fry Allstate, Swansboro, goes the extra mile to make sure you're in good hands, like helping you customize your home and win storm coverage with their write-your-own home policy. Yes, save even more when you bundle your home, auto, boat, motorcycle, and even your golf cart. Remember, if it rolls or floats, call Tammy for a quote. You and everything you own are in good hands with Tammy Fry Allstate, Swansboro. Call today, 910-326-5383. Tammy Fry Allstate, 638 West Corbett Avenue in the friendly city by the sea, Swansboro. Check your mailbox today for savings on your homeowner's insurance. If you plan to rebuild, remodel, repair, or do cottage or home improvements, Williams Hardware, 311B Bridges Street, Morris City, should be your first stop. Williams Hardware carries power tools and equipment, chains and fasteners, plumbing and electrical supplies, along with Gerber, Buck, and Case Knives. Williams Hardware is your helpful, handy hardware store. Williams Hardware cuts glass to size. When the chores are done and the cleanup is finished, light up that Wilmington Grill for Williams Hardware. Williams Hardware, 3011 B. Bridge Street, Morris City, open Monday through Saturday from 7.30 to 6 p.m. and Sundays for your convenience, noon till 5. Phone Williams Hardware, 252-726-7158. Southern Touch Painting, Maintenance, Power Washing, and Roofing specializes in residential and commercial interior and exterior painting. In fact, they paint most anything except cars, including homes, businesses, apartment complexes, decks, and they do minor repairs, wood repairs, pressure washing, waterproofing, and more, including storm repair and cleanup. Southern Touch Painting, Maintenance, Power Washing, and Roofing, fully licensed, insured, and locally owned and operated by Roger Carroll Jr. References available and customer satisfaction is always guaranteed. So if you want to paint and maintain, power wash, or need a new roof, call Southern Touch Painting Maintenance and Power Washing at 910-939-0749 or visit southerntouchpaintingnc.com. Southern Touch Painting, Maintenance, Power Washing, and Roofing salutes our troops and is proud to be part of the continued growth of Onslow and surrounding counties. It's, it's live and local. Real Talk on Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME. Okay, we're back. Okay, we're back. We're talking. That um, George is one of the, I mean, let you say, more interesting and inspiring candidates uh, that we've had in here. He's uh, he's really cool in what he's doing. And I'm extremely interesting oh, yeah. to listen to his view. Knowledgeable too. That was the other good thing. He's got. It was he's almost got like. On straight. I mean, he's libertarian, but it was almost like listening to someone from the No Labels Party. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I guess so. Um, this is interesting. And that's the the only party that has not dissed me. <laughs> the Republicans and the Democrats don't acknowledge that I exist, even though I outnumber them. Yes, they do. When they want your vote, they're going to they're they, going to be right too, there. Or they want money. They're going to come mow your yard. I get um, I get requests from Biden every day oh, for money. Congress, you, you know, you so, have a chance to come share me some money with me. Come on, please. I mean, we're then talking I get them from Jill. honestly three to five times a day. Mm -hmm. I get texts sure. from the Republican Party, and I keep hitting stop, stop. So I don't, I don't know why I get it from the Democrat Party. numbers coming up. I'm just like, oh, no, you're not getting any money from me, but it's just continuous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, anyway, interesting guess. It is. Let's go ahead and take our last break here so we don't get behind, and if you want to chat with us after that, give us a call, 910-333-0139. 910-333-0139. You're live in local Real Talk, Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME, WSME, 971.com, heard around the world. Freedom 97.1, WSME. Hey, race fans, New River All-American Speedway, 4744 Richlands Highway, Jacksonville's action attraction presents the National Dodge Chrysler Ram 250. Featuring the Z Max Cars Tour this Saturday, March 23rd at 7 p.m. Featuring the biggest names in short track racing. Get ready for some fun and excitement as the racing season gets underway. Reserve your spot now. General admission tickets $25. Seniors, military, kids 6 to 12, $12. Catch at the gate. Advanced tickets available online at New River Speed. 
Forward slash tickets. It's the National Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram 250 this Saturday, March 23rd at 7 p.m. And the only place you're going to see it is a new River All American Speedway, 4744 Richlands Highway, Jacksonville. For 40 years now, people throughout Jacksonville and Onslow County have trusted Barnes Diamond Gallery for all their jewelry needs for every special occasion. They understand that every day is a special event for someone, whether celebrating a wedding, anniversary, birthday, engagement, or graduation. Let Barnes Diamond Gallery custom design something for you. Barnes Diamond Gallery does on-site repair in addition to their quality and selection of diamonds. Diamond fashion bands, pendants, watches, earrings, gemstone rings, and necklaces for anyone for any occasion. Major credit cards accepted. Layaway available. Barnes Diamond Gallery offers appraisals and paid top market prices for gold and silver. Barnes Diamond Gallery, 461 Western Boulevard, Suite 120, Jacksonville, open 930 to 530, Monday through Friday. Looking for a job? Full-time? Part-time? Il Cino Italiano Restaurant wants you. We're currently hiring for hostesses, servers, bartenders, and dishwashers. Il Cino Italiano is a family-owned, fast-paced restaurant that offers the best in fine dining on the Crystal Coast. If you're hardworking, reliable, professional, and have a desire to always strive for better, we want to talk to you. Make great money and be a part of an outstanding, dedicated team. Il Cino Italiano on West Corbett Avenue in Swansboro. Have you gotten your copy of Topsail Times newspaper this week? If not, did you know that Topsail Times is Topsail Area's only local newspaper and print? Started a little over a year ago, we now have over 1,500 online subscribers and 5,000 printed copies that go out every two weeks. And we never charge our readers. Information should be free to our readers, and we stick by that. Looking for an idea for date night? Want to learn some local history? How about asking a veterinarian about your pet? These things and more are available in each copy of the Topsail Times newspaper. Want to get the word out about your business? We offer great rates for full-color ads, and the online paper version is always included for free. Need help designing the perfect ad? We can do that, too. We're always looking for human interest stories, so start writing. And we love local photos, too. Check out our website at topsiltimes.net, where you can find out where to pick up a copy or check out our latest publication online. If your plans include hitting the road this year to do some traveling, make sure a visit to Silent Service Center is on your to-do list. Travel safety starts with the tires on your vehicle, and a visit to Silent Service Center will give you peace of mind with the best value in all neighboring tires and the largest selection of used tires in this area. In addition to quality tires, Silent Service Center is a North Carolina inspection station and does complete brake service, oil changes, and alignment service. Silent Service Center... 1907 Lejeune Boulevard, Jacksonville, and 188 West Main Street, Havelock. Phone 910 353 4760. It's live and local. Real talk on Freedom 97.1 WSME. You know, the states you know, of Missouri and Louisiana are both suing the Biden administration for what they claim coercion between the administration and large social media groups. Biden and company have used various techniques to force the groups to stop or take down posts on those platforms they don't agree with. By doing so, only the government's point of view is given to we the people. That's the claim of the aforementioned states as well as the way a lot of Americans are feeling these days. Um, the um, On this show, with posts that I have made on our Facebook page in the past, the gods at Facebook Remove the posts from the public saying there, <laughs> there was no proof supporting my opinion. Yes, it was not posted as a fact. It was merely my opinion on whatever the issues were at the time. The way I see it is apparently not the way the Biden bunch sees it or wants anybody else to see it. They have their opinion, as do I, and you, and you, and you. You don't have to read or listen to what we say, but if you do and you want to civilly respond to your opinions without harassing and belittling anyone, you're welcome and encouraged to do so. When you cross the line, you can expect others to weigh in. That's the problem we've had in the government off and on ever since I can remember. They think they're always right and that everyone who disagrees with them is wrong. Perhaps all of us should enroll in a civics class followed up by a civility class. We've got a caller to one. I just wanted to say, you okay, know. Now we got a call. Okay, good. Hey, how are you? What's going on? It's all about you. Yeah, listen. Did the Republicans pass the bill that passed the Senate for immigration? 
Did they pass the bill that passed the Senate for immigration? Yeah, the House of Representatives. Did they pass that bill yet? Not that I know of. How come? You I don't know. About you, immigrants. Why didn't they pass it yet? Do you think I can call them to speak for yeah. the House? How about Ukraine? Did they send any money to poor Ukraine? I hope not. Them through? I hope not. Huh? I hope not. Maybe when you when Greg Murphy calls up, maybe you can ask him. We'll say, we'll find out. Hey, listen, I heard you planning sending money to Biden. He doesn't need your money, baby. I wasn't complaining. I just, <laughs> I, I just found it. 190 million uh, raised. 190. Listen, you might want to send to your to your guy over there because that billionaire doesn't even have enough money to cover his judgment. What that? What's going on here, baby? Well, well, I wasn't complaining that he was trying to get my money because he's not going to get it because I don't have any. But I was just making a point you don't that have it's, any money? it was just a point that it was kind of funny. Funny that he's sending me a request and followed up by Joel about three or four times a day. All right. I'll let you go this time. Maybe when you get the, the bill next time, you can send five bucks. What do you, you don't have any money? I don't have, you any, don't money. have any money. No, the, government's got, the government's got mine. Yeah, all right. All right. So okay, help the guy, right? Because, uh, you know, I don't know how he's going to make it by next Monday, all that money. Come on. He's a billionaire, right? Who? You know who? He, both of them. You know who? Maybe you know who might pay for that bill. Maybe Mexico. Mexico might be the pay for the whole four hundred fifty million. Don't take pesos in this country. <laughs> yeah, maybe they'll be nice to him. <laughs> nice, nice try. Oh my gosh! All right, you guys have a good day. See you. Take care. It's great hearing from you. Well, you know, <clears throat> you were talking about social media, and you were talking about. Facebook and not accepting some of your posts and stuff. Did you know that uh, even if they banned TikTok in the United States, China can still get our information because there's a lot of media companies out there that deal with social media. And besides, they had balloons. Gather that information (laughs) and they sell it to companies. So at any time, China can request that and they can sell it to, I mean, there's just so much that we don't is, take into account. The, the thing is on TikTok, they, they can garnish. I mean, I do not want China having access to my computer. And if I got TikTok loaded on my computer or by telephone, they will have access to know exactly what I'm doing. Whenever I'm on the computer, they'll know what I'm putting out there or what I'm requesting information about. Google does the same thing. I understand that. You know, Google. <laughs> you- have gotten into a conversation like before we went on air <laughs> and we're talking about specific product uh-huh. and then through the morning we open up our email or we go to like Facebook account do. and there's an advertisement for that. It's that very product. I'm telling you, it's, they know everything you do and, and you click on one website, you'll be getting ads for that. If you, uh, if you, I, I, and I put up something earlier about this particular shoe, Yes. I haven't checked my email yet. Right. With the Biden It'll issue. be in there. Because I'm curious, because I want to know, is that something that will help me? Right. It's 150 bucks for a pair. Well, I you know, they're not that. bad looking shoes. No, they're not. We're well. looking at them. I just got to find out if they got arch support, extra arch well, support there was in them some, as well. Yeah, they, you know, I get the Brooks. I like Brooks because they're um, very, very comfortable. Brooks That's and like, No, Brooks, it's like walking on air. They're oh. very comfortable. I have some flag shoes that are Brooks. A new lawsuit against New York City Mayor Eric Adams. Did you see this? Alleges that during his time on the no. police force in the oh. 1990s, he demanded sexual favors from a colleague in exchange for help with a job issue. Adams accuser Lorna Beach Mathura said she had been repeatedly passed over for promotions and experienced resistance all too frequently faced by black and female NYPD employees in that era. Adams at the time served as a leader of the Transit New York PD Guardians Division, so he sought him out for help. So she sought him out for help. The lawsuit claims that instead of helping plaintiff get fair treatment at the Defendant Transit Bureau, Defendant Adams preyed on her perceived vulnerability, demanding a quid pro quo sexual favor and sexual assaulting plaintiff, revealing himself not to be the guardian he purported to be, but a predator. A lawyer for the New York City Corporation Council called the allegations ludicrous. According to the lawsuit, 
I'm going to have to clean this up now. Mm. Beach Mathura learned in the fall of 2023 that New York had passed a law allowing survivors of sexual assault to come forward years after an attack and thus felt compelled to bring Adam's behavior to light. She alleges that Adam said he would help her with an employment problem, but instead drove her alone to a vacant lot and requested a certain type of sex from her, which she rejected. <laughs> he continued to sexually assault her, according to the lawsuit. Mayor Adams, you may have some troubles. On that note. <laughs> okay. We will be back tomorrow. We have uh, Dr. Rosemary Stone tomorrow. We have uh, Mr. Peter Wright in here tomorrow. He yes. said we don't know what they're we do do know what they're going to be talking about. Everything from Medicare, Medicaid for Peter to uh, what's ailing the children these days and how flu and stuff do we have going on? Allergies is a good subject. We need pollen, to talk about pollen, that. pollen. Whew. That's going to be the mess. Yes. Have a great rest of your day. You're live on local Real Talk Freedom 97.1, 1120 AM, WSME, WSME971.com, heard worldwide, right around the world. And uh, also on Simple Radio if you want to check it out. Come now is Fox News break at 10 o'clock. Uh, D's. Another dose of our daily D's. He will be in spinning tunes until 3 o'clock this afternoon. At which and the only, the man, Chris Hollywood Man. WSMU, Camp Lejeune, W246TJ, Jacksonville.